Yeah, before we get started here, just uh, want to make a statement. Um, the claims that uh, have been focused at our pro program are all false. Uh, we do not pay players. We never have. We never will. So uh, I do want to thank President Schill and Rob Mullins for their support the last couple days. But uh, I'm not going to answer any more questions about that. But I did want to make that statement. Can you say just what your reaction been this week as your program's been put through this kind of on a national level? You know, it, it's nothing's changed. You know, our practices have been the same. And, um, you know, like I said, the people who know me know me. Uh, the university's been great. Rob's been great. So nothing's really changed here. And you have no concerns with this trial moving forward that anything about your program will, will come through there? I don't. Were you guys blindsided by this? Like, did you know this was coming down the pipe? Um, no, no, we didn't. We didn't. Um, so, you know, like I said, I don't want to answer any questions. We need to talk about the season. Uh, but we didn't know to answer that question. You say you and your staff have not paid or have ever, will ever. Are you aware of anyone at Nike or Booster ever doing no. so or offering to do no. so? No, no. Why in your assessment when this comes up, why do you feel players come to Oregon? Well, when you say that, you almost insult our school. No, no, I'm saying well, from your perspective, you've obviously accomplished a lot. You've been to the Final Four. Okay. You're a very you've just answered facilities rich program. So, uh, no, I, you know, we were here and to get our program started, uh, we took a lot of transfers. We took a lot of junior college players. Um, we got very fortunate with the class of Dylan Brooks, Casey Benson, uh, Jordan Bell. Chris Boucher, uh, all guys that weren't on the radar, and they came in and took us to an Elite Eight and a Final Four, and those kind of winning seasons uh, we hoped would lead to recruiting success, and we feel they have. We've got good players, but we've always had good players. Whether the press or the recruiting services rank them as good players, that's their decision, but we've always had good players. Uh, Arslan Katsimi. Uh, Joe Young, you know, we've had good players here. You don't win games without good players, and we've been very fortunate for eight years we've had really good players. Dana, how hard is it to know what's going on all the time? It seems like a lot of what's coming out is there's a lot of people behind the scenes doing a lot of things. It's probably hard to keep tabs on. Uh, I'm not sure what your question Just is. Just in terms of, of recruiting, how hard it is, is it as the head coach to know everything that's going on and feel confident that everything's being done right? Well, I've, I've got a great staff. I have very good guys that have worked a long time for me. Uh, Tony's been with me since we've been here. Kevin's been with me 17 years. Uh, Mike's going on his fifth year now. So I feel very confident uh, in my staff. Uh, I think we... We work very hard, we think we do a good job, and, and I think the results have shown that. Have you spoken to Troy, or has Compliance spoken to Troy about the accusation? That I don't know. I, I've been gone. Um, we didn't practice yesterday, we had a day off, so I was out recruiting. I just uh, just got back in. What's been the reception from recruiting perspective? Are they asking questions at all, any recruits? Or the recruits have been great. Um, you know, the people who uh, have considered us are still considering us, and uh, we've got a lot of work to do to try to tie up the class. But uh, you know, we've had a great response. Uh, uh, you know, we've got a lot of good things going here. We play in a good league, play a good style. Um, you know, we've we've got a lot of exposure, so um, you know, it's a great place to go to school. I think that's why 25,000 students go here. You know, so. Um, you know, we'll just keep selling the good things that we have here and, and hope that we find the right group of young men that, that want to come play for the University of Oregon. You said this offseason was going to be really important for a lot of the sophomores to take that jump from what Dylan and Jordan and then Tyler did from sophomore to freshman to sophomore year. What did you see from the offseason from those guys? And do you feel like they made a big jump? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I've been real pleased with our offseason. Uh, I think our guys have, have worked really hard. Uh, Kenny's really improved his body. Uh, his confidence level on the offensive end is going up, which, you know, last year he did a great job defensively, but offensively wasn't much of a threat. Uh, I think he'll be much more of a threat this year for us. Um, VJ's made progress. Abu's made progress. Both of those guys. Uh, you know, we've got five guys 
uh, who played for us last year. Uh, Peyton, Paul White, and then Kenny, Abu, and VJ came off the bench. So we've got five guys with experience, which puts us in a lot better place than we were a year ago with, with basically only Peyton coming back uh, with any experience. So, uh, you know, I'm excited about those five guys leading us. Uh, we're going to have to get a lot of contributions from the new guys. But uh, I do have a lot of confidence um, uh, in those five guys. You said that Paul is the one guy that's had the most improvement, your, your oldest player. You know, he's worked really hard. He, he wants to have a good senior year. And, you know, you see that with a lot of players uh, over the course of their careers. You know, they that senior year, they get a little bit more focused. They realize that it's the last go around. And uh, Paul really has put in the time. He wants to have a good year. And we sure hope that he does. We need him to. We need his experience. Uh, in a lot of different roles. I think he's versatile. I think he can play a lot of different roles for us. Kenny, Kenny said he's shooting the three now. Is that something that you'll actually play? Well, we won't go that far. <laughs> but, uh, no, he, he, you know, he has been working at it. And, he, you know, we encourage all our players, you know, to continue to work on their skill level. And, and Kenny has put some time in. And uh, uh, we may let him display it time to time. Uh, We'll see how he shoots it in practice, you know, in our scrimmage situations. But his form looks pretty good, and uh, um, you know, he's he's looking. Like I said, his his offense has really improved. You know, I I don't think that um, he'll be a dominant offensive player, but I do think he's someone we can throw it to in the post and, and get good results. I, I remember at one media day like this a couple of years ago. I think I remember Bell was saying that he thought he could start shooting the three more. What is, is Kenny more realistic in those terms than Jordan? Yeah, Kenny's got a little better form than than Jordan did. Uh, you know, Jordan's instincts were so good. You know, his passing ability and uh, because of his experience playing a lot of ball, Kenny hasn't played that much. You know, he started much later than Jordan, so his instincts and you know his gamesmanship's not the same as Jordan. You know, and one of the reasons Jordan played so much last year for Golden State was just, you know, he knows how to play and his instincts are good. He's a very good passer. And, uh, uh, you know, Kenny's got to work on some of those things. But just from a natural standpoint, his, his shooting form in that is, is much better. You know, they don't lose King. Is he practicing? Or? No, no, he's, he's doing some things, but uh, nothing live yet. Um, you know, I don't know when he'll be back, but. Uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that he gets cleared at some point in time. You put in a, to no time zone. I mean, are you thinking this could go into the season or late in the you season? You know, I'm not going to make any predictions there. You know, it's just whenever, you know, the uh, doctors clear him, you know, we'll get him out there. What are your expectations for Peyton Pritchard this year? Well, we, we need for Peyton to have another good year. Uh, I think Peyton's year last year, um, was undervalued by a lot of people. He, he was solid. His assist to turnover ratio, his shooting percentages. Uh, I didn't get him enough threes, to be real honest. We didn't get him enough opportunities. Uh, shot 42% from three, and you know we probably should have got him a few more threes. So um, he's worked awfully hard. Peyton's a worker. Um, he'll be ready to go, and um, you know he's really trying to give the team everything that it needs defensively, you know, some vocal leadership. Uh, he's sticking his nose in on the boards. Um, you know, he's trying to move the ball around. He's trying to look for his opportunities, which he has to do. But uh, uh, he's had a really good off season, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to depend on him. You know, he and Paul are two starters back, and especially early, you know, those two guys really, really got to carry us. You mentioned how this year's team has like five or six guys back from last year. Have you seen that carry over into the readiness of the newcomers compared to last season? Um, you know, a little bit. You know, I, I think um, you know they've done a little better job in the weight room and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, that's you know a pretty good indication that you know we're getting some leadership there, and, and those things usually carry over. Without a lot of depth in that backcourt, do you see those guys needing to be on the ball, off the ball a little bit more than maybe in the past? Oh, guys? you know, I, you know, I think that you know Peyton's a good ball handler. Uh, Will's a good ball handler. He has shown some, you know, signs where uh, when he gets in the paint and stays down on the floor, he makes some really good decisions. Uh, we need VJ to, to tighten up his handle a little bit. You know, he's shooting it really good, but we need him to be able to penetrate. And, 
you know, handle it a little bit. Abu's cut down his turnovers, which is positive. Um, so I, I think we got enough ball handlers, but, um, you know, we're not as deep there as we've been in some of our previous teams. So those those guys are going to have to handle it for us. How about Bull? I mean, do you just trying to find ways to use him? Has he been, now that you've been able to work with him, has it been different maybe than what you saw in film or been able to? No, he's, he is very versatile. He can do a lot of things. Um, you know, we do have to find ways to, uh, to get him involved, um, you know, spread the floor for him and be able to penetrate that. Uh, but no, he's, he's worked really hard. He's trying to figure out a way to, to help our team. And again, we could really use him on the defensive end, the boards, you know, he, he, he's very talented. And so he's a versatile player that we need in all facets of the game, but finding ways to, to use him offensively there's going to be a challenge for our staff just to keep that floor spread and with him and Kenny or him and Francis, him and Paul, uh, to be able to, to use two bigs, maybe even three bigs at the same time. Maybe if Kenny can step outside a little bit more, does that alleviate that a little more, even if it's just mid-range? Well, we'll wait. We'll wait and see how that goes here. And, uh, we got uh, you know October and November to see where that goes. What's the process of getting everybody on the same page and given loose situation and everything else? Is there, do you reserve judgment on what this team ceiling could be until a period of weeks or even months? You know, I whether it was our teams in past years or this team, you know, it's always a work in progress and, and the guys determine it. You know, we uh, as a coaching tra staff try to put them in the right positions and try to give them, you know, things to do to help them out but it basically boils down to how they adjust and how they work together and, and how hard they work and how much they're willing to give up of their individual game for the betterment of the team. And, you know, it's just so hard to predict, you know, October 4th, 5th, uh, you know, how that's all going to work out. But I do think they're really good guys. Um, I think they do want to win. Uh, I think the team aspect is, is pretty good for all of them. So, you know, I, I'm encouraged, you know, I, I think they want to work together, but, you know, October is such a big month, you know, especially for a team that's trying to blend in five freshmen and, and one grad transfer, you know, a lot of new faces. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this month progresses. And then, you know, November, you know, early challenges, uh, you know, we'll just see how we handle it. Yeah, scheduling wise, how did the home and home with Boise State come to be? Kind of a necessity. Um, we just couldn't find anybody to, to come in, and they couldn't find anybody to come in, and uh, kind of waited till the last to, to try to get a late, late game, and neither one of us could, so we just decided to play each other. You're going away from here more often. You've got a We've got three road games. Um, you know, it benefits us uh, in future years. It's a little tougher this year uh, because Houston's a two for one, Boise's a two for one, so we get those guys back twice, and uh, then Baylor's here next year. But we do have three true road games, which uh, will test us. And uh, you know, other than the Boise State, you know, the two Texas trips are long trips, and then the New York trips a long trip. So we do have some travel ahead of us, and uh, with freshmen, it'd be interesting to see. You know how they go into those venues that we're opening up a new building in Houston. So you know, remember what opening night was here. You know that'll be a, a big night for them. And uh, you know Boise's always given us problems. It's it's a good game for us because they you know they challenge us, give us problems. We've had great games with them. And and Baylor, you know we we've played them previous years. And uh, you know they they help prepare us because they play zones and they play different ways, so I always think that Baylor's good playing because you see some zones before uh, the conference season starts. You have two kickbacks that comes up real quick, and you get a couple games here before, but then you're on your way to New York pretty quick. Yeah, that's that's a scary tournament. Um, Iowa's got everybody back from a year ago. Uh, Syracuse has got, I believe, four of, of starters back. Um, you know, and UConn, you know, has always given us fits. So, uh, be a real tough tournament in you know Syracuse and UConn. You know, that's uh, almost like a home game for them with their crowds, and so we'll have a, a real tough time 
you know, in that tournament, especially with Iowa's experience, um, and then you know whoever we play that second night, the crowd. There's been a lot of continuity with your staff the last four or five years. You guys got a new strength and conditioning coach this season. Is he implementing anything different for you guys, or kind of trying to keep it on the same? You know, uh, Adam uh, got a great job. He, he got the head. Uh, conditioning coach for the Charlotte Hornets and uh, North Carolina was home for him so uh, that was an easy decision I think for him and uh, but we hired Evan and uh, really pleased with him uh, we wanted an NBA guy and uh, somebody who has that experience and has those ties to to stay on the cutting edge and um, been really impressed with him so it, or he's off to a great start what's, what's the background for an NBA guy that you that, that's so appealing to you well, I just, I think they can stay on the cutting edge of, of what's going on with the NBA training wise. Uh, I just hire a football guy and they're training for football and you know, we don't need to lift the basket. We need to put it in the basket and we need to keep our guys healthy. I think so much of what those guys do is, is getting them flexible and, and keeping them healthy. And uh, with all the technology we have over at the Mariota Center, uh, you know, looking for impossible deficiencies that might lead to injuries. Uh, we spend a lot of time when players arrive testing them and seeing if there are any deficiencies that we can try to get fixed in the weight room. Uh, and Evan's on top of all that. He's familiar with all that. Uh, he and Clay work together great there. So, um, but then again, you know, just staying in contact with NBA people, see what's new in training. I think it, it helps us. What are your thoughts on the change of the RPI going to this new net metric? And do you have a firm understanding as far as I don't, this net metric and, is? You know, I worry about those things you can't control, you know, and I I don't know how it's going to adjust. I understand some other formulas are more important than previous formulas were in the equation. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know how it will affect this year. You know, I really don't. Um, I think some of the same things, though, you know, road wins, um, you know, how your team plays. You know, they look so hard at November and December now. Um, so you, you've got to get off to a good start. You've got to play well early, uh, which is, is going to be important for this team. So, um, again, I'm not sure how it will all wash out, but uh, changes were made. And I think coaches will adjust down the line when they see how it plays out this year. Anybody else? Yeah, last year you defensively early in the year was on and off, kind of struggled to get guys on the same page. Do you feel like with five players back it might be easier for like a bit of work? I hope so. I hope so. We didn't have a, a good year defensively last year, and uh, that's as much my fault as it is the players. You know, our uh, teaching, our focus, it, it just wasn't good enough. And uh, so, you know, we're going to spend a, a lot of time you know, really hammering the things that we think are important and trying to get this team to, to focus in a little better. But our transition D last year wasn't good. Um, at times, our, our defensive three-pointers was, was not good. Uh, our activity, our deflections were way down. So, you know, we as a coaching staff and as a team uh, didn't have a good year defensively, and it cost us. Uh, we should have had a better defensive team, and I think if we would have, we'd have had a better year. When you self-scout that, what was it? Guys thinking too much? Guys um, thinking not reacting or not communicating? Or was communication. Things? Communication was a big thing. Um, you know, our, our ability to close out. You know, our closeouts were bad. Um, you know, I didn't think we fought the ball screens well at all. You know, so I'd say those three things, transition D uh, and communication, um, you know, our closeouts and, and then ball screen defense. You know, those three things are we're going to focus in uh, a lot more this year. And obviously you've got some size now. Back yeah. there, which should, help, I assume, help that. Well, you, you never know. You know, we, we've had some pretty good defensive teams that, you know, really got out and pressured well on the perimeter, you know, so... Uh, we're going to try to keep some pressure on the perimeter, but uh, Kenny Wooten really came on as a shot blocker last year, and Bobo's very capable. Uh, you know, Paul's a good defender, so you know I, I'm hoping that our defense really picks up.